by Perry from Perry's Clock. Good to see you again. Great to see you too. Last, last time our lips were blue. We oh were my goodness, it was 60, freezing. 67 Broadway and yes. John Hohen put us up to that event. We, we shot him after that. Huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. We had to climb over things, up oh the steps. God. It was, it was quite a challenge to get up indeed. there. But, but it was warm. Oh my goodness, it was freezing <laughs> cold. And that wasn't that long ago. That it's was a, about two months ago, maybe? Two, two three months ago. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it, it was just unseasonably cold, I think. And yes. it was rainy that day. Yes. Gosh, that, yeah. I, I, I want to say it was one of those really kind of nasty March days. Mm. March or April. Yes. Absolutely. So thank you for being here. And I've been following the story on Facebook since we last met. I've seen that you've made a lot of progress with that building and your society in general. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, we're trying to, uh, we have a, a group together, Historic Preservation Group, trying to put community back in Salem, because Salem is one of our most important cities, one of our earliest cities, 1675. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to put community back. We're not here just to save historic structures. What we're trying to do is to create a place where people like to live again. That's the essence. And build it around the arts. And in doing so, we would like to train young people how to do historic preservation, how to appreciate and enjoy their environment, not move out of their city. Uh, so but this, this is going on for years and years of, of decay, urban decay in Salem, which we know probably 100 years or so. So it's difficult to get out of the rut. So what we've been uh, blessed with is Mayor, Honorable Mayor Washington has given us two houses to start with, 67 and 75 on West Broadway. And uh, what we're trying to do is restore them right. and we're going to sell them and hopefully the city will be able to purchase uh, two or three more houses and eventually start taking down Broadway, uh, East Broadway and back market down Market Street. What do you think has been your biggest challenge so far with this project? The biggest challenge so far are the people that say they're going to come help and they don't show up. People that are going to do this and do that and just empty promises. And it goes over and over again. It doesn't stop to this day. I was very disappointed. We had our first volunteer day about uh, five weeks ago, and uh, we had two people show up. Oh. It was advertised in many different ways, and uh, we had we had a group of people here. And if you look it up, uh, Life After Television has it. We had a whole series of quote political people here that day, and you would have thought that instead of a great photo op, they would have called all their constituents that they know and school children and we would have had two, three hundred people there. At least fifty, seriously. But uh, it's very sad that these people just want to fuel their egos and they don't want to come through. So that's the greatest problem here. Um, the actual rigors of doing each of these disciplines, 18th century historic trades, is very easy compared to that. Yeah. What have you been able to do since we last met? I know that there's... Since, since we last met, we've had two, essentially two cleanup days. We've cleaned uh, all the debris, which has destroyed floors, radiators. Uh, so people go into these buildings to rape them, rape them for drug use, possibly to sell metals. So they just rip and pull. So we've cleaned the wallpaper up, uh, part of the basement up, and then the front of the property. Uh, we can only go so far. We have permits in with the state because this is an historic dwelling. We have to get approval. We're still waiting for that. I don't handle that. Um, our leader, Mike Gorman, handles that. So Mike Gorman and the uh, Honorable Mayor of Washington. So we're waiting for them to say that we can actually start historic preservation on this property. We want to actually train kids in this process, have students from the Botech, from the trades in Salem High School and other high schools around the county. They're why we do it. Have you started that program? Oh, no, because we, we, we've not gotten the go-ahead from the the state of New Jersey, okay. yes. Now, funding is always critical. So yes. how is this project being funded and what can people do to help? People can send donations in. Um, right now, our, I, would, I would say our group is quite rickety. We don't, we don't have a great formal structure as far as raising money. And that's a big downfall. I, again, I'm only the historic preservationist in this group. So I take care of the structure. I, I can tell you what's wrong with the structure come up with an intervention, a proposal plan to help fix the structure, as it was in the 18th century. But others in our group, you'd have to ask them that question, what are they doing to raise money? So 
basically, I'm sitting back with a few others in the group. Anyway, so this, this weekend at the Shivers House, uh, I'm doing Arts in Bloom, and I do marquetry. Marquetry, uh, as the French put it about 350 years ago, is painting in wood. It's using wood that's about a 16th to a 32nd inch thin. Oh I could do, you know, your face, your body, and, and 20 different species of wood. First, oh first you draw it, and then you cut this out. So here are these 20 different species of wood. These are natural colors. They're not dyed. They're only a 64th of an inch thick here. Wow. Yeah. And then this is compressed onto a substrate. So what the French have used this for, the Dutch have used this for, is to do like doors, amois, and things like that over the years. That's and spectacular. I, I trained in Paris back in 03 to 05 under one of the masters in Paris how to do this at the Chateau de Versailles. Will you have your pieces for sale tomorrow at all, uh, or just gen- on display and kind of presenting the process? Generally, no. This, this type of art form plays into the restoration. So when you have missing pieces of wood here and there. So generally, my art is preservation, conservation, restoration. It's not so much doing one-off pieces, which I do occasionally, but these pieces would go into the twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 range. And they would take in excess of a couple of years. And you can't do them in one setting. You couldn't say, I'm going to go through this year and create this piece. You, you work a little bit, you think, as Donna said, you ponder, you feel it, and then you move forward again. So I, I, I don't like getting into something that big. You get a client that's all over you at that point with the monies they put down. So I prefer just to restore the past. Uh, it's all about saving history with me. Why are you so passionate about the Salem City Project? Well, Salem City Project, we're passionate about it because that's where America essentially started. It's one of the five towns where America started here. Um, I went away for 38 years. I lived up in the Lehigh Valley. I'm from Alloway. I come back five years ago, and I see a deplor- deplorable, deplorable condition of these towns. It's not just Salem. It's Bridgeton. It's Byron. It's Millville. They weren't, they weren't great when I left, but coming back now, they're atrocious. And, and there's a ton of reasons why this has happened. But we're going to say one reason why it's happened in the last 20 to 25 years. It's the elected officials in these towns that are Section 8 HUD housing car carriers. They have destroyed the rateables in their own towns that they've been voted in to protect. Salem, Bridgeton, Violent, and Millville. And that's the problem here. And I know we've discussed previously that Salem City has some of the highest rateables in yeah. Salem County. Yeah, yeah. Which is really sad when you consider the average demographic in Salem City. Absolutely. And two years two years ago, they, they, the rate bulls were redone. We, for instance, one house on, on Market Street that's a nice colonial, probably 1801, had a, va- a rate bull value, 120000 Now it's been dropped down to thirty nine or 40000 So proportionally, all these houses in Salem have dropped down about a year and a half, two years ago. And how sad is that? So try to sell that house. You may think it's a good thing for tax changes, but when you got to sell that house, you got a big problem. And the taxes are high. Yeah, the taxes are still high, good compared to what's been. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what else would you like to share with us? So it's some positive news now. It's not all negative news. We're, we're, trying, to make, we we're, we're trying to make headwinds here into a, a huge storm. Maybe it's bigger than, maybe we'll never make headwinds, but we won't keep, you know, John and I and... Uh, we also have to add the superintendent of schools, uh, Salem County School, Jack Swain. Jack has been with us uh, gutting it out. We tore down, a, he helped tear down a barn behind the property at uh, 67 Broadway, and he's lifted the radiator. So Jack has provided a lot of tooling from the Salem County Votech. So the positive thing we're going to leave on, right now I've instituted, or with Jack Swain and I, we're going to institute a historic preservation program in the Salem County Votech for the trades for juniors and seniors set slated to start this September. It's going to be the only one and the first in the country. So it's going to take the tra- trades and we're going to overlay historic preservation classes every week for the kids. So they become viable to stay in their community, not to go somewhere else um, to, to work in a factory to build a uh, travel trailer somewhere in Wilmington, Delaware. Right. So they stay here, they have community pride, and this program will be starting in September. Can I just say that the last time we met, I feel like you were a little more positive about the, the entire process and the society than you seem, you seem today to have a little bit of your, the, the 
wind sure, knocked sure, out of your sails. Sure. sure. Well, we, we, we stood there on a day a few weeks ago, John, Helen, uh, Jack Swain, and, and two people show up for our volunteer day. That'll take the wind out of your sails. The mayor showed up. Good for him, because we need him. He's a big guy. But that's not the people we need. The disappointing thing is the actual people in the town that have successful homes there, and there are many, that they don't show up just for community support if they can't help. There's people involved in history and sale. They don't even show up. It's people that just don't care, and that's a problem. But I, it's not just sale. It's all across the country. So history is a passe thing. Look at antiques. Nobody wants those antiques. The kids don't want your antiques when you hand them down to them. So we're in a real sociological transition right now, and uh, we'll just, again, keep our head down and plow through it. So. Do you feel like that's simply a trend, that antiques aren't as popular as they used to be, and maybe they will gain popularity again? Or do you think that they're just sort of something in the past? Yeah. Well, Times in, are changing. In, in, in the world of the last 500 years, you see antique interest peak and flow every 15 or so years. We're at a 25, 27, 30 year downturn right now. And we don't see it turning around anytime soon. So it will come back, but the problem is you get people with the wrong people with good antiques in their hands. They repurpose them for something else. And you'll never know what that thing was again. It's finished. Uh, people that couldn't afford a certain kind of antique that had to be taken care of, they get their hands on it. They don't take care of it. Something breaks, something cracks, it changes, they discard it, they put it in the garage. So we're exponentially losing antiquity every day because it is in the wrong hands right now. So, But uh, it's, there's nothing we can do. So, but architecture is the most fragile of all the arts. Um, architecture goes back some 5,000 years here in humanity. And uh, it's exposed to all these external, external weather, but the, most, the worst thing it's exposed to is man. He doesn't take care of it once he, once he sets it up. Uh, he wants to change the style the next time. 20 years, 30 years later, the style gets changed again. And everything gets watered down. So we're trying to put these houses that we're dealing with in Salem City back to it as was original, as we can perceive or can conceive. Yes. What percentage of the homes that are historic in Salem City do you think can be salvaged? Um, Probably about 30% um, vacant 18th, 19th century buildings in Salem could be 87 to 90. And if 30% of them we can save, there's many of them with their roofs falling in tonight. And all it would take was put people in the county who have the means just to say, you know what, I'll give you $10,000 and we'll, I'll buy blue tarps for you. Let's just tarp the roofs of those dwellings. Let's save them. But we don't even see that. And, and we've been, this group's been going for over a year now. So it's, it's, it's quite shocking. But we're not the first ones. There's been other, other groups that have tried things in the last 20 or so years in Salem. A few people actually live in Salem who tried things. And they run up against similar resistance. So um, I think we have a group, a core group of people, specialists, and, and uh, we're just not going to give up. So. That's wonderful. But what we're going to do is we're going to use art as the core to retake it. That's, that's the key here. To make a livable place where people want to be, they don't need to leave their community. Well, I know that after we met last time, I felt like you were the man for the job and that nothing was going to stop you. you well, I'm just the preservationist. I'm not the main, our main man's not here tonight, but we should get him. We should have Mr. Gorman come down and talk. He'll, he could tell you maybe a broader spectrum of his plans for the group. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for Great. joining us again. Yeah. And have a wonderful weekend at Arts and Bloom. I hope that everyone comes out to support Arts and Bloom and support Greg and support Donna. Uh, where can people go to find more information? Well, Donna laid it out for the uh, for the Arts and Bloom. Right. Um, but you want to look at Life After Television, John Hohen, because John's putting the videos out. For me, I have three uh, three Google, three, three YouTube channels, Historic Preservation, Clocks, and Perry Conservation. So if you look up those, you'll find 60, 70 videos, very bad videos that I've made, <laughs> but it all helps. But... What I also wanted to say, when you're coming to Salem County this weekend, anybody out there that chooses to come, I mean, you have a whole array of artists. We have from, in Arts and Bloom, we have basic craftspeople. And we have up to trained artists, formal fine arts and decorative art people. And everyone in between. So you have the whole gamut, which is nice. But don't forget the history in Salem County. Each of these towns, it could be Pedricktown, Woodstown, Elmer, Salem, uh, all the towns have historic structures. So look them up. 
I've done uh, maybe 10, 12 videos on my YouTube channel about these historic structures. So look it up and enjoy your day. You know, as you're floating, you're going to hang an alleyway, stop and see Worcester Glass, the first glass manufacturer in the country. Wow. If you're going to see me, you're going to come to Woodstown. Woodstown doesn't have a lot of historic structures. My house is the oldest. It's the oldest tavern in the state of New Jersey. The Shivers Tavern is 1669. Uh, so you're going to get a feel of history in the house, see my studio, and see me create the work that you're seeing here. So you get two for one with me tomorrow and Sunday. That sounds fascinating. So everybody come on out and enjoy your weekend. Yeah. We're going to have a great weekend. It's going to be in the upper 80s, I hear. So. It is. So we're, we're, we're some comfortable tired. Yeah, but. Well, and I posted on my own Facebook page yesterday that Salem County has so much to offer when it comes to art and culture, and it's it's just not well known. So I think that people think that it's farmland and dive bars, and there's so much more to Salem County, and we just need for people to come and explore and check it out. We have wineries, and you know, there's just so much to do down here. Thank you to you because you've interviewed me four or five times. I she, enjoyed it Tiffany, every time. Tiffany's Thank volunteering you. <laughs> again to John Life After Television, and we would have no exposure with the, the, the Historic Preservation Group and uh, everyone else in the audience. We have a great audience here tonight, so thank you everyone for coming. Okay. And as soon as my schedule allows, I'm going to come down and volunteer and get down and dirty. That's too. Super. Yeah. super. Yeah. Good seeing you. Me too. Thank you. Take care.